edisyon po ina ni PFM tutuloy na malungkot tutaw ala tay magduk morsel talk show argi dlo mantitilar civic action team okay halbok mo ako sa brandy malbol open na program ay dalmol mo kung tutaw brandy okay malungkot tutaw marbek la dro ko yes ola do mesa tema dem na talib lang na kranain tayo kubet sa talk show argi the civic action team Tigil ko kutim ang ngayon ng ilal time, 8408. Tigil ang umre ka temir ang ngayon pelaw. Kura ulingit ra chow ay taro. Kura mas elme o nga sergi dal kura ako kinterview ra ang gil Sergeant First Class Marshals. Ang ngayon ng ilalang ngayon malungin tutaw eh chow. Tigil ang malungin tutaw eh. Randi tigil ang malungin tutaw mga listeners. Tigil ang nga na blura odior makumagot eh. Ma susul kita mai betul, ma tiga ruba kara orior, ma bilu ma masih ira orior, ma raklay, ma lebih raklay ma tiga kita arbol belau. Idegal, idegal suah dalu kau ikang, ungu kutar ma presiden, ma minister sini, ma minister service cabinet, ma of course vice president, ma tiga kita le governance association. Idegal suah dalu ungu kutar ma presiden ta senit, ma member sa senit, ma speaker a house, ma ma member sa Nah, chair house of the delegates. Oh, kami. Oh, ini umal segitu malu kami. Mat elah tu tangan yang kata gubet sok kekal kiri, dia kata gubet sok program lah. EPFM mak tiri kau malu. Orang asal lembah Randi kau mal kalik serau. Kita lang orang ke la sergeant first class marshals. Enggang a saya last tadi bawa dah dah tu enggang mula mesti kini mesti cama awal orang erung tem temeril temer belau. The second tour in Palau. That's right. You know, I'll give you a tick mark. Second tour. What does that mean? I don't know. 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 I was just saying that, you know, it was, it kind of, I was awestruck by the idea that I met you, and mm -hmm. then when you told me this is your second tour yeah. of the CBs here in Palau, I was mm -hmm. going like, wait a minute. You know, that's like a, a lightning a striking one place two times, yeah. <laughs> which is like uh, kind of rare in my view. I don't know if it's, maybe it's not rare within CBs, but it's rare for me to mm -hmm. listen to that. So uh, thank you, uh, Sergeant First Class Marshals, for being here. I do know that every Wednesday uh, mm -hmm. in the morning, um, you guys have your cat team talk yeah. show, but this is a little bit different. This is about maybe relaxing and let's just talk more about, you know, the cat service. So mm -hmm. um, let me give it over to so my So maybe you do an introduction, but my question to you is, when was your first tour here? And then and then how did you were able to get uh, your second tour? And then maybe the, the second question will be like, so what does the cat team or what? Service, you've been in Palau. I mean, the CB's program has been Palau. When I was growing up in the seventies, we call them CB Can Do. Mm -hmm. So you've been here for uh, the CB's program has been here for more than fifty years, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't fifty. Years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't look like it. Civic Action Team. Civic Action Team actually uh, started in nineteen sixty nine. So nineteen sixty nine. Oh, yeah. Many teams. It's a tri service mission rotating through the Army. I mean, the Navy. Excuse me. The Air Force and the Army. Mm. Uh, before it was only open to Navy. Navy, like, Navy yeah. We were only like referred to as CBs. Like I'm in the Army. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we're just we're called engineers um, mm. in the Army. Okay. But I know since it's unanimously known by the Navy, you guys roll over to CB. So yeah. it's right. tri service mission since in the 1969 it was only Navy. Somewhere I don't want to misspeak. It was put out a wrong date. Mm. But then it became a tri service mission where it rotates through Air Force, Army, and Navy. So only the navies are called CBs because yes. they're CBs. CBs. So like, yeah. you know, you have the yeah. So the CBs is the is the CV is the Navy's land force. I right? see. So the Navy has the sea, the people on the boats, yeah. and the CBs are that like the engineers, the people doing construction out here. They are pretty much the Navy's land force. So mm. a CB would not like being called a sailor. Right. right? Yeah. Oh, really? It's a big thing. Yeah. <laughs> so like if you like me, even me. I only learned about CBs pretty much when I came here working with the Navy construction, you know, 
And I was like, oh, Sailor. And they were like, no, no, no. Uh, we're CBs. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So, Get it right. Yeah, that's, that's, their, that's think, their thing. I think for my first collection of CBs was actually when I was looking at a documentary by uh, Father Hazel mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. Micronesia. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then after I said, Magama Dabliliyo. Sail Bob Reka, Magama. The war in And then, you know, the airstrip in Peleliu. After the war in Peleliu, or they were still, you know, under all this gunfire, the CBs were actually moving, laying out, you know, resurfacing that that airstrip in Peleliu. That's when the first time I've heard of the CBs or through the history of that Father Hazel documentary, you know, the history of Micronesia. That's where I first got to understand. I mean, but again, 1969, that was like... Oh, I was not. Long time ago. Um, so, yeah, that. they've mm. been doing programs. Uh, the CAT team, oh, the yeah. Civic Action Team, was actually um, throughout the whole FSM. So, they had uh, a CAT team in Micronesia, Croatia, um, I mean, all through the FSM. Yeah. And then they had uh, Saipan, I believe. Mm. So, then a certain another date, which I, uh, I, I need more research yeah. on, but. That's when they closed the civic action team across the FSM and only kept it on Palau. Mm. So right now, currently in the Army, the only civic action team, or well, in the United States military, is Palau. Wow. And right now, they're trying to do, they're looking at opportunities because of the different things they've seen with the civic action team in Palau mm. of how to spread that through different places around the FSM. So, I did so, not Papua realize Guinea, that. Yeah. Oh. So are you saying that there is no CAT team in FSM or the Marshals at the moment? No, only there used Palau. to be. There so, used yeah, to be. But they, they shut it down, but the only place they kept it was Palau. Mm. So now, all the great things they see coming from Palau with the civic action teams, mm. they're like, man, we need to spread that throughout the FSM. Yeah. So, yeah. Luckily for our team, we were here throughout the whole, we've had a lot of visitors from Congress and a lot of different oh, higher ups oh. trying to see like, what are we doing? Yeah. So they want to, they want to, mirror what we created here, what the Civic Action Team creates here, and put it in, you know, the other places yeah. that need it, uh, mm-hmm. Papua New Guinea, yeah. um, Saipan, or different Yeah, places. because, you know, now that, Yap, you, yeah. I think it is. Uh, now that you mentioned it, it kind of, I just <clears throat> imagine that, you know, you guys are actually really good, like, you know, for lack of a better term, is you guys are, are good ambassadors mm-hmm. yeah. of what, you know, what the U.S. military, especially what the CBs do for the community. But mm-hmm. I think, for me... Uh, when I look at it, it's from the, the grassroots level. Mm-hmm. You, you do more on the ground, community mm-hmm. service. Yeah, yeah. That's, our, that's our main goal, mm-hmm. uh, keeping a good um, mm-hmm. relation between the United States and, you know, the FSM. Yeah. And, and I think, um, and, and I'm not going to like, you know, I'm not going to be biased or anything. Mm-hmm. But honestly, I think you, you guys are really doing a great job mm-hmm. in uh assisting the community there's mm-hmm. a lot of things that the community really needs mm-hmm. help with well, see, and you guys are really kind of well, out well, there yeah. to help them and i think it's really opening up a lot of opportunities for yeah. palauans to really yeah. you know take advantage of well, uh, the civic action mm-hmm. team so so if it's only palau so where is your command post i mean if you're based here who do where do you get your orders from who do you so work? my my unit is stationed in hawaii okay Schofield barracks with the, oh, 80, Schofield. Okay. With the 84th engineer battalion Mm-hmm. Um, 130 Engineer Brigade, USAPAC. Um, so the Civic Action Team comes from our uh, our unit every year. Okay. So I guess I'll just... So how I got selected twice. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's a big mystery. Like, I'm Sergeant First Class Marshal. Um, uh, I've been in the Army 14 years. United States Army Engineer. Um, so I had... Last year, 2000, I was here on the tour 8407 because mm-hmm. we're 8408 now. And um, we... I was here. I got selected by my unit. I had just got to Hawaii during COVID. Mm. Hawaii was shut down. And then I, I came off the trail from being a drill sergeant. Okay. Wow, drill sergeant? Yeah. Oh, okay. So when I got there, I was considered what the Army considers KD complete. So they, they were like, what's next for you? And I was like, I don't know. I really don't know because I've done wow. my platoon sergeant. You know, and then my, my, bo- my boss said, okay, I got a mission for you. It's mm. Palau. And I was like, what? I've never heard of Palau. Oh, yeah. I was like, what? what? Okay, <laughs> sure. And then I'm you- thinking like, you know, I'm in the army. What kind of mission is this? Like, what am I doing? Yeah. I come here, and you know, um, so, you know, long, long story. I can make long, but you know, I I came here, tried to figure out, you know, our mission. They t- told us community relations, you know, and I was like, okay, man, you know, Palau's very cool. Like, you pretty much can make whatever you want mm. here with you guys, mm-hmm. you know. So I went to the track. I got with Coach Puria. Shout out to her, mm-hmm. and then I was just 
out there running with the track kids. Mm-hmm. And then I just said, hey, can I coach the track team? Mm-hmm. From coaching the track team, started events with the with the PNOC, mm-hmm. Coach uh, Puria, then the House of Pain. Mm-hmm. With the, you know, we did a lot of things. And yep. that just branched off different events. You were there when I was here. So mm-hmm. paddling. Did, did Rodney um, join the House of Pain? Yes. I did. did. Actually, yeah. And yeah. how did you do? It was, it was painful. <laughs> <laughs> we lived up to our name. So, yeah, we did a lot of events um, with me, with Coach Puria, and then the CDU as well. Um, Miss Connie with the CDU. We we started doing uh, outreach. Uh, I mean, it, it's hard to admit. It's hard to think about all the stuff I do. When people tell me, but I forgot about it. Mm, yeah. Um, and then, you know, our tour was over. We did community construction. We paved the... Uh, we did a parking lot for a church. Mm. We just did everything. Um, and then after I left, you know, there was it was just a good feel from the community. Mm. Uh, a lot of people knew of me and my team, yep. you know, of all the people in the team. And then when I left, came back to my unit, the next thing they know, it was, it was you blinked and it was time to come back. <laughs> like Because our unit, 84th Engineering Battalion, connects, conducts mm. interviews mm. every year. Mm. So, like, they select the AYC. Mm. The officer in charge and the assistant officer. Okay. And then from that, me and the OIC select our team, which is supposed to be the best of the best. So wow. our team is the best of the best from our organization. Wow. Every wow. every individual is hand-selected so, for this mission. So you're saying you guys have to interview people that you want to bring to Palau mm-hmm. based on the needs of Palau? Or no, based, based on, what? on your team. So your construct, your, your carpenter, your welder, uh-huh. all the different uh, places. Because our, our team is staffed with a carpenter, a welder, an electrician, a plumber, two mechanics, two heavy equipment operators, yeah. um, mm. and a supply person. So, so the ones you mentioned, carpenter, mechanic, mm-hmm. welder, and so are those the core? Mm-hmm. And then you, you then are you allowed to bring in uh, other expertise like welding and so forth? Or are there that that no, there's there's that's a the core there's a template. The cat, yeah. So the cat team is AYC um, officer in charge, assistant officer in charge. A doctor, a yeah, provider oh, for the outreach in here, the doc, the medical. Then you have the carpenter, the plumber, uh, the electrician. Uh, you have two mechanics, two heavy equipment operators, uh, and then we have a supply yeah, person. I see. So those are like the core services yes, that you provide. Those are the services, the different trades the, 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 for, uh, for actual community construction. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. But so there's only 13, right? 13, is that the number? 13. Why 13? 13? 13 is a bad luck number. It's an uneven number. Mm, it's 13 <laughs> with the doc. It's, it's been 13. Um, so usually the, the the sergeant major, uh, they, they select the officer in charge and the, and the assistant officer in charge. Mm-hmm. And they have interviews for that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't get an interview. They just walked up to me pretty much and said, hey, Sergeant Marshall, uh, just letting you know you're going back to Palau. Are you cool with that? And I was like, yeah, I'm cool with it. But I, you know, and come to find out, you know, mm-hmm. certain people from Palau had wrote letters to uh, my organization back home. Mm-hmm. Um and I found out that, you know, that they were like, they were like, you know, Marshall, you've done such a good job. Palau wants you back. Mm. And I was like, I can't say no to Palau. So here yeah, I am. Yeah. And, and uh, Can't say no to Palau. Can't yeah. say no to Palau. I mean, Palau is a great place for you to be in the Army. You yeah. know, there are places where we can go. And then uh, I was like, yeah. And then it was great for me, uh, at least be, me personally, because, you know, with every team, you see things that you wanted to do more or wanted to do better. Even now, right? We're yeah. leaving uh, February. And I still haven't even got to some of the things like me and you talk yeah. about, you know, different things. So like mm-hmm. that time. So when I got told, do I, I need like, to write a letter? <laughs> <laughs> I think we need yeah, yeah. to write a letter. <laughs> uh, three P, right? They call me the repeat offender. So I think that'd be a history historical. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so like last time I was like, okay, you know, last time I came in Palau, kind of like un- unknowing of what it was. But yeah. this time I had an advantage because I was like, oh, I know exactly who I need, what Ooh, kind of person I need, yeah. what type of people I need, mm-hmm. and uh, what I want to do. Mm. I pretty much, you know, as soon as I got noticed, I called Coach from, and I was like, Coach, I'm coming back. Yeah. We're going to do this. And I called different people. I called you, Ronnie. Mm-hmm. I messaged you and, and, and all the different people of things. So I was able to select, We, me and the OIC were able to select a, a great team. And the team we have, I really am very appreciative of. Like, they are like everything I dreamed of as a team. Mm. Each individual here is invested in community relations. Mm, they're invested yeah. in bettering Palau. Like, yeah. uh, like I don't even have like sometimes I don't even have to do anything. You know, mm. a lot of the events that we run, the haunted house, the, mm. the Christmas events, mm. this was all by each individual on our team. So, mm. yeah, so it's great. What were you more uh, focused on, or what were some of those things uh, that you guys wanted to uh, 
do differently this this time around? Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, you have different programs. We have like, uh, you know, the track. Mm-hmm. You know, the track was my heart, right? So mm-hmm. like, I wanted to just do more events with them. Yeah. Um, I wanted to get involved with different organizations in the Palau in, in, uh, Olympus Committee. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to get more with the youth. Mm-hmm. Um, last year we did book reading, so I, I guess I'll talk about how we did things last year or mm-hmm. what was conventional. So mm-hmm. I guess my goal, what I wanted to do, was make every every event, and me and the OIC, uh, Lieutenant Westman, who's very uh, present in the community and very uh, ambitious, mm-hmm. we wanted to take the stuff we have and make it bigger. Right? Um, like we have movie night, yeah. and you know, movie night was usually just mm-hmm. on camp, right? So we took it into Karor because a lot of people can't come to Karor uh-huh. and, you know, gas. Everybody, I mean, everybody can't come to Iraq, can't mm-hmm. come to camp. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, we take it to the Cove. So we took it to the Cove. It's in Karor. It's free. Communicating with the Cove, uh, the mat, the management there, mm-hmm. um, they decided to give, because, uh, you know, us doing a movie night there, mm-hmm. it's a help, help. Mm-hmm. So then, you know, everybody has access to it. Mm-hmm. The, the Cove gives prizes at every movie night. Oh, uh, well. And we put blow up our screen, and we did that. Not only with movie night have we just taken it into Karor, we we wanted to make sure that uh, we took it to different places. So, right. you know, because last last time I left, I think the the message I I left with was meeting with uh, PCC is like we are Cat Palau, mm. we're not Cat Karor. Mm. Love Karor, but yeah, Cat say- Palau means we should like the whole Palau should know the civic action team. So yeah. what we've been able to do this time is do a movie night in Angar. Mm, I see. And we did a movie night in Peleliu. And we've done movie nights up north in uh, Narard. I don't want to say it wrong, but Narard. And now we're yeah. still, even though we're still here, we're still trying to look up farther north places so that it's not just, you know, one specific area that knows the cat right. team. Because you walk around and you see some people see you like, who are you? Like, mm, you don't yeah. have a cat team? We're Cat Palau. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's that's it. And, you know, just... Everything, House of Pain, we take House of Pain, not just on camp, we take it to the track, make it available to more people, um, what other stuff. Oh, book reading was usually at the library um, when I was here last time. So this year, uh, but you know, it's in Westman, my my officer in charge, and a few people from the, you know, uh, Sergeant Jones, my welder, and Sergeant Bowman, Wiles, uh, they have uh, created a program through the school. So they, at Iri Elementary, on Wednesdays, the whole day is dedicated to us getting into there. They do book reading with uh, the uh, the kids, the different grades at uh, IRI, mm. and they also do PT, PE. Mm. And from that, you know, they take in that. Jones was like, okay, we got IRI. Now let's get another school. So now they're going to Munich. Jones is your welder. Welder, yes. Oh, he's a welder. Jones. World class, if he's listening. That's the yeah, world yeah, class, yeah. class welder. welder. Yeah. We'll not forget that yeah. first <clears throat> interview you guys did. Yeah, that, that phrase, world class. World yeah, class. He's yeah. the world so class Jones. Welder. Jones, these guys are like celebrities with the kids in the yeah. community. Like mm-hmm. whenever I'm going, they're like, oh, where's Steven? Where's Rachel? Where's uh, mm-hmm. Bowman? Uh, so Jones went to Muse Elementary, and now we have book reading in two different schools on different days mm-hmm. um, throughout our time here. And that's weekly. That's mm-hmm. a, 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 what we call battle rhythm. So I guess the main thing we wanted to do coming back is make the civic action team more available to the whole Palau. Mm-hmm. And I think we've my team has been very successful at that really proud of them with that so so uh, so like this book reading have you seen changes has it been positive are there been positive oh, yeah. impact from it's amazing. you get it from the, yeah it's crazy uh, from the teachers as well as teachers, from the students the teachers the students love it mm-hmm. and not only do my guys go in there read books but they you know they 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 mentor some of the kids there yeah the different grades um they play with them mm-hmm. they give them a different perspective of the military because um Everybody thinks of the military is like, oh yeah, you know. A lot of kids ask, "Where's your gun?" Yeah. You know? But but everybody in the military, I mean, we all are soldiers first. But I think what we've been able to do is show them that you know, in the army, you can be an electrician, mm. you could be a mechanic, you could be a carpenter, you could be different things. Everybody's not here to yeah. you know, shoot yeah. violence. You know, yeah. we're we're here <clears throat> to do positive in the community. So, but Nick, before we get to the uh, other areas, but. So what will happen to the reading program? I mean, you guys will that be mm-hmm. will that continue or what will be the <clears throat> Yeah, so so with our turnover, you know, pretty much you turn over everything that you do to the new team. Yeah. Um so the goal for us is to, you know, once the Air Force gets here, we're going to be able to, you know, say this is what we do mm-hmm. and and usually, I mean most of the time, you know, you carry it on. 
So the new team, we introduced them to the, the our point of context through our different organizations, the mm. track, CDU, mm. the book reading, the schools, the principals. And then the new team will be able to take what we have. They'll, they'll watch us do mm. it and they'll carry it on. Mm. It'll, it, sh- it should continue to work great. What are some um, challenges that you guys faced mm. for um, this time around? Mm. Challenges. I think... So I think if if there was a challenge, it was, I think the last team um, just had an unfortunate uh, tour here during COVID and a lot of things being locked down. Yeah. Right? So a lot of the a lot of the team last year was not able to get out because mm-hmm. a lot of them were locked down. They had to stay on camp, mm-hmm. different stay at home orders and things, um, which prevented them from really getting out in the community. Mm-hmm. So when we got back, you know, so like. It's, it's so different coming from like when I was here before, like we were like all over the place. Yeah. And then when we come back, I'm like, oh man, you know, I'm in the community talking to people and they're like, oh no, I don't, House of Pain, what is that? And you know, yeah. you know the Civic Action Team. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like getting, getting yourself back out that, there. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, the people who knew you knew you, but yeah. like, I think COVID really hit the last team and, or the, and the team before yeah. really kind of like kept us away from the community. So I guess the challenge was for us to be I know me and my OSC, our, our, our motto is bring them out. When mm. we came here, we were like, we're going to bring them bring out. out. Bring them out. Bring them out. We're going to bring them out. Bring out the community. We're going to yeah. get out. So, like, yeah. you know, the, t- the, co- the camp was kind of a ghost town when we got there. The gym was not, um, you know, the gym had to get shut down. That's one of our big things on the camp. Yeah. You know, if you come to the camp, you're either coming to the gym, the basketball court, or the clinic. So That's right. You know, when we got here, the gym was pretty much empty. Mm. House of Pain was, uh, was just, you know, movie nights. Mm different things. So I guess our biggest challenge was just making our presence back known and uh, make, getting, bringing them out, bring, mm. getting uh, the community back. Mm. And I think we did. It was great. Do you think six months is enough time? Mm. <sighs> yeah. um, no. I don't, I don't think six months is enough because I feel, for me, people, I guess it depends on who you're talking to. Mm. I think for me, around six months is now. Like I feel like my team is just getting warmed up. Mm. Right. Like, yeah. Like even now, like I, I really feel I feel bad. It's bittersweet, right? Because you know, yeah. we all have families home to get back home to. We all have things to do. But um, like for me, a person who's just always just, what can I do next? I want to mm. do this, this, this. And then you just come to this part like, oh, it's time to go. And then all your ideas are just in a bag. Mm. So it I mean, a year would be great. I think a year would be awesome. Uh, just just me. Some mm. people like six months. So. Yeah. Mm. Do but you I, get us? And and you've and been here twice. twice. Like, mm-hmm. do you get a sense of uh, family or home yeah, no, when I you're love, in Palau? I love Palau. Mm. Like Palau is my second family. Like the people I've worked with are lifelong friends. Mm. Uh, I mentioned Coach a lot because Coach has been with me, and uh, you know uh, PK from the Paddling Association. There's yeah. so many different people that are family here. Like if I came here to visit. You know, Swingly, the boat operator, mm. you know, all the pe- yeah. different people I meet. This is family. Like, they treat you like family. They feed you like family. Mm-hmm. Um, and you guys are very appreciative. And that's that's probably one of the best things about the mission is, like, everybody in Palau, you get to see direct impact of what you're doing. And the appreciation, you guys, just makes you want to do more for Palau. Mm-hmm. Like, I love Palau. Mm-hmm. I would come back a third time. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So... Uh, going back, so we we're talking about you were mentioning about the uh, the welders and, mm-hmm. and the carpenters, two mechanics, mm-hmm. and so forth. I know I want to give you that the mainstay that when I was growing up, even now it's these apprenticeship program. Mm-hmm. And so, if is there like a possibility because you know the world is changing dynamically, mm-hmm. and yes, and those the, that you mentioned are key. Uh, so, how many apprentices do you have now, and what's you know how long does it take? I mean, when do you recruit? When, and when, if I get into the program, mm-hmm. when do I get, uh, how long does it take? And then do I get certified or so forth? So mm-hmm. the apprenticeship program, we currently have six apprentices. Right now we have two heavy equipment operators. We have a welder, we have a mechanic, and we have an electrician. Mm-hmm. Um, the apprenticeship program usually is 10 people mm-hmm. um, or more, but due to, you know, COVID budget restraints, mm-hmm. we had to like lower the program. Um, hopefully, you know, PCA, we've been we've been talking in communication about how they can get it back up. But, okay. Um, as far as, like, how long does it take, the good thing about the apprenticeship program is it's what we call competency-based. Mm. So right now, we the, the apprenticeship program is 12 months. 
you have 12 months to complete Even the though you're only here for six months. Yeah, yeah 12, 12 months. months. So, so technically, you know, the, the, the apprenticeship, the people on the apprenticeship program have 12 months to, to graduate. Mm, oh, they have 12 months. Up 12 mm-hmm. months. So as far as us being here for six months, what happens is we just turn over and then the new team continues their training and then they graduate. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But it's competency-based. I've had people come on the program. Mm-hmm. And like we talked about um, before, like recently before the show, it's mm-hmm. like, you have a lot of talent in Palau. Mm. A lot of people who are mechanics who've been doing working on vehicles their yeah. whole life. Mm. They just don't really have the certification yeah. behind it. Yeah. Um, you have people who are electricians. Mm. Most of the apprentices that I've hired and worked with, they've already had a lot of experience in these fields. Yeah. They just need secu- uh, you know, certification. Mm. So um, what ends up happening is, you know, you come, you're you're so you have two aspects. You have a, a certificate that is printed by us and PCAA. Mm-hmm saying that you were trained by the Civic Action Team, and they also get a certification through the NCCR program mm-hmm. in Guam Trades Academy, which is recognizable in 50 states. Okay. So that gives them the ability to, you know, branch out to different areas in the in the United States. Mm. Um, with that card, they can get certified in their training. It gives them better job opportunities. Yeah. Um, you have 12 months to complete the program. However, if you come in and you just like, you know, I had a guy, um, Chico, you know, he, he was already a master carpenter. Mm. He came in and he 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 graduated the program within five months of being in there because he was just taking the test because you you take the test when you're ready. Okay. You don't take the test like like you like somebody could have two tests. Some of the apprentices right now are taking two tests a week because mm-hmm. they they feel like competent in it. Yeah. And then you can either graduate one month, two month, three months as mu- as long as it takes you, but in that twelve month period. Yeah. So when you say the program, did you do it? Uh, when you say test, is is it? Uh, Writing test? Do they have to understand English? Do they have to understand numbers? Or uh, yeah, or is it just of... like uh, here? You give them the materials. I want you to build this. Or this is the pro. Well, here's the uh, part of the car. Figure out what. So our test cons- consists of a written examination, depending mm-hmm. on the subjects. Um, I w- it would take me forever to get into every different uh, mm-hmm. subject in it. So you know, some of them are math, uh, math, uh, mathematics. Mm-hmm. Um, different things. So you have a written examination and you have what we call a performance profile. Mm-hmm. So performance profile is like, you know, in carpentry, you know, you go and hammer a nail or mm. you operate a saw. That's hands-on, on-job on training. So okay. you do a performance evaluation on that and you do the, your hands-on your written examination. But they're not by themselves. They have instructors because each of my mm. trades uh, mm. supervisors mm. We are certified in Guam before we get here to be instructors through the NCR program. So oh, everybody here is is certified instructors. So they instruct the apprentices. So okay. the apprentices don't just come here. We throw a book at them. So so they quickly, are. before you come to Palau, you have to stop in Guam mm-hmm. to get certified stop in and Guam then come the, to Palau. Yeah, we stop oh, in Guam with the Guam Trades Academy. All of my, uh, every trade under me, all the people, the welder, the the carpenter, they're all certified as instructors mm. to instruct um, the apprenticeship program. Mm-hmm. Okay. So my understanding is that some some projects begin uh, in one uh, uh, in one team, and then when another team comes in, sometimes mm-hmm. you have to complete some of those projects. Yeah. But what are some um, things that you guys completed for this, uh, for this tour. team? Yeah, for Man, this tour. For this tour. So we did a footbridge, um, and that. N- Nermanglui. Nermanglui. Yeah, the village down there. Um, it's like a historical site. It was a bridge we did there. In Nermanglui. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know okay. what I'm talking about? With the, All right. So we did that. Um, we've done uh, uh, projects with the Red Cross. We built signs for them. Mm-hmm. Um, we fixed roads for the UXO, the UXO um, organization. Uh, we was one of our, our heavy equipment operators. He fixed the road. Up north um, for PCAA, and then he also uh, is currently, he just finished another one, another road for another village. And mm-hmm. then we also did um, carpentry. Our carpenter has been very busy. He's done uh, shelves for the uh, Nash Palau National Pool. Mm-hmm. He's done uh, pool platforms for the kids mm-hmm. that are, are training in there. Our electrician, she's done uh, renovations of a house for the embassy. Mm-hmm. Um, also rewiring. Oh, our electrician, uh, Sergeant Bowman, who she's a repeat offender. This is her second time here too. Oh, really? Oh, oh that's Sergeant cool, Bowman. Yeah. So she did. She rewired um, Mizinti High School. <clears throat> so I don't know if you guys. That's that prank call that we did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> but she that I don't know if you guys. I mean, the lights in the volleyball court in there were completely like almost out. It was very dark at night. Oh, I see. So she went out there, rewired the whole thing. It's lit up. Um, 
uh, let me see, our welder. He's done multiple tech assists throughout the community for just people coming up. He also just recently did one for the agri- the Palau Agriculture um, organization, mm-hmm. and he did a biochar can. And he's actually developed a, a product that is going to be uh, replicated for everybody for they can do their um, – their gardening, their, their agriculture, and use it for compost. It's, it's actually a game changer that he wow. he did. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, yeah, for carpentry, electrician, our mechanics, our mechanics have just done everything because the mechanics are the people who people just drive up in into the into the the camp to the shop into the shop, and as long as you have they they do the diagnostic on your vehicle mm. and. As long as you can provide whatever they need, whether it's oil, a spark plug, whatever, they fix mm. it for you. And not only have our mechanics done that here, they branched out. When we go to uh, when we go to Angar and Peleliu for our monument maintenance, they've taken out their kits to do. And then also when we do outreach with the CDU, uh, one of our great supporters that we work with, uh, we go. We've gone and done outreach out there where they've taken their tools and done mechanical assistance in other islands. Um, so they have done vehicle assistance all over Palau. Mm. And then, wow. yeah, it's a lot of good projects we did. We've done a good job. We Oh, playgrounds. Our builder has renovated the playground at Arai mm. Elementary, and he's currently working on Koror Elementary. Um, yeah, it's amazing. Also, you know, the satellite office, Jen Anson, the roof was coming down uh, from the rain. Our builder, uh, Heiser, he went in there and repaired the roof. So we have a lot of different projects, and we've been able to complete them all. Mm. Uh, wow. We're still the only ones we're still currently working on are Corolla Elementary. Yeah. yeah. So have you been down to the Southwest? I mean, are yeah. there projects that you do? Because I'm just kind of listening, and it's just basically Baba La, mm-hmm. Corolla. And... No, yeah. So the roads we were talking about in Melike Oak, I just didn't want to. Which yeah. are the names? Yeah, they're up north by the capital. Mm. Uh, the fish hatchery, mm. our heavy equipment operators and um, our carpenters dug out the trenches out there to 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 be, do pre- prop better drainage and mm. and actually uh, yeah. improve that yeah. area. The fish hatchery. Yeah. Well, uh, southwest like uh, Hatobe and Pulwana, the southwest islands. Have... Oh no no no. no. Not, not is is that like, not yet? Is that for safety reasons why you're not able, or can um, you do activities or projects out I th- there? We can. I, I think my last tour, we actually did a recon out there. Uh, um, Sansaral, like yeah, Sansaral. Yeah. Sansara. Yeah. So we did recons for areas like that. I think it's the, the logistics of getting out there. And, mm. You know, um, it takes like two days to get out there sometimes. Mm. Yeah, and also it's so, weather dependent too as well. Weather yeah, dependent. Ocean, just say, yeah. Sometimes the safety and yeah. you know just the right timing. It would be. A, it, it is something for us to look into. Um, we were looking into it at one point. It's just something mm. that has to be carried on. For the different islands, I would love to do a, a project in Sansaro oh, yeah. or movie night in Sansaro. Know the population is there. It's like yeah. I don't know, forty people. Yeah, forty people watch movie. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I was uh, young at Malagok and when the CBs came in. They, mm-hmm. Back then, they played the projector on the reel and mm-hmm. all that. It was movie night. I mean, the community is so excited. Mm-hmm. You know, you get your chores done really quick, and mm-hmm. then you're praying to the gods that the sun sets really yeah. early compared to the other days. Mm-hmm. And then when you do go out, and then they used to play it right on the lawn at the Malgyok Elementary School. Mm-hmm. And it's a whole community event. I mean, yeah, yeah. we bring our mats, we sit, yeah, we talk, yeah. and then... It was, uh, so we did a movie night just probably like two weeks ago in Narard. And I have to say that that was probably the biggest movie night we've done since mm-hmm. we've been in Palau. Like that whole community came out. Yeah. And um, yeah, like you just said, people drove up in the yeah. trucks. Yeah. The, 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 the the people from the school brought food for us. Mm. They had coconuts. Mm. They brought coconuts to us. It was yeah. just everything. It was so good that we, we played two movies that night. We were there like almost to 11 because it was just, it was so great to see everybody out. Because they don't, certain places that don't get touched, they're the ones that come out yeah. immediately. Yeah. And I also know that um, the OIC is working on a, a website. Yes. Or... So she's she's actually starting a education a website. That allows, so she's been real big in the schools um, and like the high schools. She's done SAT prep for the, the kids that are going really? to SAP. Yeah, she's she's had them come on camp and they've they've come on camp for hours on end. There were days on the weekends where they come in and she brings them in. She gives them practice tests before their SATs, um, ASFAB prep for people who want to join the military. Um, and now she's working with, you know, uh, 
the embassy and you know the other organizations um, to build a a website which has all the information you need to get into college, like everything, how how somebody from Palau can get into college. Because I feel like, you know, a lot from from talking to a lot of the kids, they they have they have a lot of things they want to do. They just don't really know the resources that are out there. Mm. So she's yeah. building a website that just puts all of it up front in front of you for Palau, um, and yeah, it's great. So she's doing that, and then she's also communicating with PRR to have an actual event, and this is going to continue, should continue after we leave. Um, she's having an event um, in February and it's going to be anybody who wants to, to go to college it's going to have a panel of different people different people whether you what, whatever future you're trying to you're trying to go for mm. and it's at the PR and the PR has agreed to work with her on that and mm. make this big symposium if you will mm. um, where everybody can come and get that information yeah Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I know the uh, the national government just started. I think it was last year, right? When we mm-hmm. had like a career day type, mm-hmm. right? You yeah. know where well, I think it was at Airwood Park, like a career the, fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a fair exactly. Yeah. And I think we need to do that more. Yeah. So, because, so yeah. So that's what she's doing. She's actually uh, she's in in the process of building the one that we're gonna do here before we leave, mm-hmm. and then we passing that on to the pro- next teams um, and signing different memorandums and understanding its contracts mm. to keep it going. Uh, with the civic action team and um, the local community so that everybody has an opportunity, knows what they need to do in it, and has the information well in advance instead of, like, getting up to your high school year, senior yeah. year, and being like, hey, you got to do all this, and then you just end up taking a break. So, yeah, yeah it's awesome. The stuff she's done, the SAT prep, you know, the ASFAB, she's really had a great, a great presence in the high schools. They know her. Mm. Like, when she walks in there, she's, she's, that, she's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember when I was in high school, I mean, SAT was just done by the mm-hmm, school. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we never had that type of a mm-hmm. service. And, no, she was. And unfortunately, it was not all the students who were, yeah. were able to do that SAT yeah. prep. It was just a limited number of students. Mm-hmm. The one that the back then Ministry of Education, that they have a, a higher chance of graduating mm-hmm. compared to others. So it was yeah. just very limited. But going back to the apprenticeship program, so I understand that. Uh, you're about to graduate some of your apprentices? Yeah. Yeah. We actually are about to graduate all six of our apprentices. So there's six slots mm. that will be opening. It'll be well, all of our slots will be opening. So you can you can uh you can apply for plumber, electrician, welder, heavy equipment operator, mechanic. Mm. And oh, we also have our administrative assistant uh our position. That is going to be open to. So, mm-hmm. and we will be holding interviews for those positions, February sixth mm-hmm. through the tenth. Okay. So, so get your applications in now. You you, you get your application <laughs> in at PCAA. <laughs> yeah. And I appreciate El Eco Paradise. You guys have always helped me with the apprenticeship program. That was another challenge, you know, getting it back out there. So, so if you're listening, if you know somebody who wants to get into the program, you know, tell them go and apply. Mm-hmm. And we will be holding. I'll be holding interviews with the new team. The new my replacement, um, for he, so he can hire his new. Um, mm. Is there any criteria? Like, do they need to attach any supporting documents for the uh, application? Or so that part goes through PCAA. Okay. So I mean, PCAA will pretty much give them all their requirements through that. Okay. So all they gotta do is pick up an application, uh, and with Miss Phoebe, at PCAA, and then they'll be able to apply. And then when six February sixth through tenth, when we come, we'll hopefully see them. Mm. Yeah. All right. Um, so, uh, uh, just going around, but are there any like success stories uh, coming up from um, the apprentice programs yeah, that lot, you know of? A lot. Or? So, one of our guys just graduated. His name was Quentin Domers. He graduated the program early. He just left to Hawaii for Job Corps. Mm-hmm. Um, we have our welder and we have our mechanics that are uh, currently in the process of applying and, and getting with PPUC, and uh, the, some of the mechanics are going to interview for PMA. So follow on. So the whole goal of the apprenticeship program is for them to come leave mm. better, leave and have a better job opportunity. Mm. Um, so you have Quentin Domers who went off off island and now he's in Hawaii doing that. I have my apprentice, uh, Dejun, the ass- administrative assistant. Um, she's already got a follow on job working with. Uh, oh my gosh! Oh, PRR Palau Royal Resort as yeah. their administration. Oh, so wow. it's pretty cool because um, a lot of the apprentices through working with us and different organizations, you know. You know, say I work for, we do a job site somewhere for Sarangos, yeah. Sarang, excuse me. And, uh, you know, one of their people said, they'd be like, okay, when you graduate the program, come get with me. So 
Mm. Yeah, we have a lot of success stories from them. They're going to be at our turnover ceremony. And then, uh, yeah. When is your turn, turn, turnover ceremony? Turnover cer- ceremony will be the 17th of February um, at wow. the Cultural Center. Yeah. That's a hard word to say. So, <laughs> but, uh, my own cultural center. So, go. going back. So, for example, if <clears throat> let's say I owned a uh, a uh, auto mechanic shop mm-hmm. and I see this potential Mm-hmm. And can I like, and he meets the requirements? Mm-hmm. Can I say, well, come up and says, go get an application, go through the uh, apprenticeship program. When you graduate, you come back. Can that be done? Like, if a uh, business person or a person see the capacity that they, this person is reliable, is just, he just needs a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Can they do, work it that way through you guys, or it has that, to go through PCA? I mean. The way they would work that is that person would apply through PCA, mm-hmm. communicate with the current OSC. I mean, mm-hmm. that's just communication. Um, let's say you're the owner, mm-hmm. communicate with me. Mm-hmm. I have a job open, mm-hmm. and then I'll be able to just say, okay, um, I'll do the interview. I hire this person. So, so, so it's also very good for uh, private sector. If you know in advance, you can probably mm-hmm. just go to PCA and say, you know, mm-hmm. like in. Next year, I'll, I'll have an opening for these type mm-hmm. of workers, and and I really appreciate if we can help through the CV apprenticeship program. Mm-hmm. We can, so that can be done, right? Yeah, it's just communication. So it's kind of a forward thinking process mm-hmm. rather than uh, you guys. But so that so that's really part of like the, the, the private what so, the PPP what they call so, it. Yeah. Currently, but, right now, like I said, we have uh, we have people we have job openings we have all six of our apprentices graduating uh, so that would mean like you're that person you would come to me uh, you would say i have a prospective person i would say go apply through pca mm-hmm. and then you know they after the interview process mm-hmm. they pull on and mm-hmm. then they go through the program just uh the, whoever the employer just needs to understand that it's a 12 month it's a a 12 month program mm-hmm. if they want to accelerate the program it's competency based yeah. but they would have to make all the checkpoints during their time with the civic action team in order to graduate earlier mm. than the 12 months. Okay. But yeah. So, uh, so thank you for the apprenticeship program. Uh, mm-hmm. But I do have another question, like, uh, and we talked about it, like, uh, for, like, for example, uh, people with disability, right? Yeah. Like, can, are they able to contact the C, your, your the program directly and you can mm-hmm. provide assistance or is there like a, a channel they have to go through because you know there's people with disabilities that mm-hmm. might just need to construct a ramp mm-hmm. or their roof is you know they're at that part of the room or how mm-hmm. homebound they need to replace the roof or right. how, how can the CB provide or or do you so, provide such support to? so we provide community construction for organizations because mm-hmm. what we consider community construction is for the organization to pull out mm. um so yes, with the so we did we actually hosted the International Persons of Disability Day mm. week um, with with you know, Okmasang. Yeah, Okmasang. Okmasang, yeah. Okmasang, right? Yeah. And we were that that was one of our things when we did the symposium. We mm. wanted to allow, we wanted to help give more access to persons with disability. Mm. Um, so so yes, we can do that as long as you know they have an organization supporting them, mm. right? So. It, it would have to be, you know, yeah. Any organization supporting that person uh, that blesses off on the community construction, mm-hmm. they come in, they do an application with us for it. We do a recon of it. And as long as they have a, a government representative and we can approve, we can get it approved as that, yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm just going to say it in Palau, and, I, and Randy, you can listen and correct me. I'm going to say Marshall, I'm going to say, 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 i am going to eh aplaid gire nge gidel member tiro los pe seguida en eso ya oh din dire gal seguida ay gandin ay nga se los adam hapta gore lo ruri nge ri ma roy de mystery link tamal masa din se be lo din dia gal el ditir kaol ruk mi tout el mal tal morti nge mo le gor al adel recognized o el el al time a a cb wal de gal that's in Malak Lagadal. Why say, okay? Why say that's in the Gabule Hul, El Muru Rana Lak Lagadal? So, why I get the organization, so the non profit, I give Olanga Telela, 
Agora, Audoud, and Grant, and Yesul, and donation, especially on um, um, Kasangan non profit, and in my uh, Yesul donation, and then a uh, Malmustadi, and then a uh, Tira, a good McLeasel while project, the base strike, and book, uh, so this organization. So uh, you need the organization uh, to help you fund whatever sort of assistance that uh, is being requested, I guess, in terms yeah. of. Helping people with mm -hmm. disabilities yeah. and, and we the homebound the elderly. Yeah. We homebound. want to do that. That's what we want to do. Yeah. That was one of our initiatives that we we started during the symposium, and we're trying to get after. And we've talked to different people um, um, throughout that symposium. Um, like I said, an organization it just keeps control because we, as much as we love Palau community construction, it's not you know mowing somebody's grass in their backyard, and mm -hmm. we're not trying. We want to just make sure it benefits. But persons with disability, that that's something that we were trying to really trying to get after. Mm. Um, we actually have a few uh, project construction uh, proposals that we came up with during um, International Persons of Disability Week. Mm. That are yeah. So All persons right. in, parents in power, parents in power. Right? Oh yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. So different things like parents that. empowered mm -hmm. and uh, Omakasang, which is yes. yeah. parents empowered Omakasang. They had a lot of things uh, that they wanted to do. They filled out applications, so we're having the works, but you know we're going through turnovers. So that's something we're going to hopefully pass to the next team, and they have the hopefully the next team has the same uh, drive to continue this on. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what's the general feel right now from the team? Yeah. Uh, as you are nearing the yeah. end of your term, from my team, yeah, yeah. you and your team. Uh, I think my I think we're all on the same page, you know. Um, we, you you know, some of them, you know, they're as anybody, you know, you've been here six months, you know, you, you do need to get back, you know, you miss your family, mm. but you know, a lot of them are just like, man, you know, I'm gonna miss Palau, really gonna miss it. And I try to explain to them from my experience last year, when you leave Palau, you go back, you really miss Palau, right? <laughs> yeah. You get back to different. Uh, you know, Palau, you walk on the street, everybody's, like, happy. Yeah. It's the first place, you know, Palau time. You know, nobody's worried in a rush. <laughs> yeah. Once you get back, you know. And then the things you do out here, you just can't do anywhere else. Mm. Like, so, I mean, you can, but it, it's not as as convenient, is it? You know, if I go to Hawaii and go to the Hilton and say I want to do movie night, the Hilton's going to look at me and be like, who are you? <laughs> you know, I walk up to the Cove and I want to do movie night. <laughs> I walk up to the, the cove and they be like, yeah, man, come on, bring your shit. Yeah, you know? I walk up to the PR, it's like, hey, we want to have a bingo night. They're like, yeah, absolutely. If I, if I did that at the Hilton Inn or the the hot, the, the big lagoon uh, in Hawaii, they'll just be like, sir, like, we don't do that we, we don't stuff. Do that here. So <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's different. What but, is the one big thing yeah. uh, that you could say you learned from both trips? Um, not necessarily about Palau, could be about yourself, sure, but yeah. one uh, big lesson that you learned uh, in in Palau, yeah. one big lesson. Um, something that you could take back. Yeah. So Palau. I guess a big lesson I learned is presence. You know, getting out. It's not about what you say; it's about what you do. Mm. Like I like I've said before, work for a cause, not for applause. You know, make your presence be known, like but that. also make your absence be felt. So like, um, whenever things are not working, I guess the thing I learned right from Palau is like when you get here you get you get on the oper we, the email we come through the email um, some things were not working for me when I got here you know trying to get things started you know I'm calling people I'm emailing but things wills really started to turn when you just get into the community and walk up to somebody and say hey yeah. I'm Marshall <laughs> yeah you're, you're, you're Joe yeah, yeah. I want to do this so yeah. like I guess a lesson I learned throughout life with Palau is just presence face to face mm -hmm. communication um, don't get stuck behind a computer Get off the camp. Yeah. And that's and then the camp can be in anything life. Just get out of your office. Get into community. Don't get don't be so uh so stuck in a box, mm. you know, because things really, really start happening when you get face to face mm. with people in the community. Yeah, that's I think take it out. That's always been part of Palau is, mm -hmm. you know, you have to put that face to that mm -hmm. person you're talking yeah. to the other side yeah. of the line. Yeah. Because it's a way of also like really engaging that mm -hmm. person, like, you know, is he yeah. for real? Yeah. Uh, is he committed? You know, mm -hmm. just a, a 10 minutes discussion, then mm -hmm. you yeah. can win them over. If it's on the phone, it goes like, well, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you want to do this. But once you show up yeah. and you start talking, be like, I'm me, yeah. you're you. Yep. Um, I want to do this. You know, it, it's really good. Um, well, I, I, I take it like, you know, there's only 
less than 20,000 people yeah. on yeah. island. So if you don't take the effort to really show me that, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you want this done, then it's like, you know, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, I have a lot of people to see. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, like Palau is very direct. So, yeah. like, you be talking with Randy, and then Randy says, hey, I know these guys. And so your connection goes, yeah. mm -hmm. you can yeah. see it, you know, Connect, mm -hmm. yeah. cascade in the community mm -hmm. rather than just being stuck in, yeah. with one individual. Like, Randy, like, oh, yeah, maybe we could ask them in advance mm -hmm. if they can help. You know, mm -hmm. those type of activities that mm -hmm. will help you so, move yeah, forward. I guess yeah. the biggest lesson, get out, presence, get off your chair, get out of your office, mm -hmm. talk to people. It's a good you one. Know, and then, you know, I believe in say less, do more. So you? you could sit there and read your, I could read this brochure. Yeah. I can uh, I can talk to you about what I want to do, my different initiatives, but the, the actions, I'm an action-based, you know, action-based, what you do speaks louder. And when you yeah. do do these things and you are successful, you get more uh, reaction from the community because they mm -hmm. see you. So yeah. you know, a lot less. of times... Say less. Yeah, say less, <laughs> do more. So like a lot of times, you know, you be on the, you know, I talk to people on the phone and then, you know, a lot of times, you know, with the prior team working with uh, my, my, my team, and be like, hey, did you talk to this person? Did they say, oh, man, they didn't answer. I just say, you know, enough. Just walk straight into there. Can I talk to the principal? Uh, can I talk yeah. to whoever? And then that's when things just start happening. Because then they see, man, this really got, this, this team really wants yeah. to be a part of Palau. Yeah. So presence is yeah. my biggest takeaway from Palau. No, you know on your brochures, uh, one mm -hmm. of your stickers says uh, daunting. I, I didn't see it. Uh, this one never daunted. Yeah. So yeah, so the the CB say can do. Yeah. Um, that but, was the team when I was growing up. Was mm -hmm. CB can do? CBs can do. Yeah. The engineers, the army engineers, my battalion. Our motto is never daunted. Daunted means fear. Yeah. You know, so we're never, we're never daunted. This mm -hmm. is our like sticker, right? It's got mm -hmm. the. Never daunted. So never daunted means pretty much no fear. We're never daunted. You know, you could say, hey, it's going to be raining. Yeah. Never daunted. We're good. We're going to. And then another thing for the engineers is essay ons mm -hmm. means let us try. So CB can do engineers. Let us try. So we're going to do what we can. And we're never daunted. We have no fear. In <laughs> oh, <laughs> there moments, there's daunting moments. Mm. Like if I'm going to go do a road and it starts raining, I'm daunted. Like For example, mm. yeah, it's daunted. It's daunting. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't let that daunt us. We're gonna to continue to push through to complete the mission. No, I, I feel like everything we talked about, uh, mm -hmm. the discussions, what you guys are doing, the mm -hmm. activities, never done it. It's right there. Yeah, it, it, it's right there. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's your mission. It's your goal. Mm -hmm. And you know, all of this thing that we discussed from the the reading, you know, mm -hmm. going to schools, doing out the reading, and all that. I mean, this is really mm -hmm. in six months. Mm -hmm. You have probably done more than. Mm -hmm. Some organizations can do in two years, mm -hmm. and with thirteen people. Yeah. So I yeah, it's a big, it's a big, it's a humble, it's humble experience. But like you know, there are organizations of thirty plus people mm -hmm. back in the army, mm -hmm. and we've done some of the things. And I think that's what a lot of my uh, higher ups that come to visit me, and they, mm -hmm. they're like, "Where's the rest of your team? Yeah. Like, no, this is it." We do this with 13 people. Mm. We we impact this whole community. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's another thing I learned yeah. is that there's there's nothing that you can't do. Because yeah. I've done we've done multiple construction projects. You know, my builder is building a whole playground right now with two, three people. Mm. You know, one would say that a playground like that cause takes like calls for a crew of 30 plus. Yeah. So yeah, we do all that stuff. And it's very daunting. I, mm. I honestly uh the the new team coming, you know, the Coming into Palau, a matter of fact, me coming into Palau the first time, watching all the stuff this team did, and I was just like, "How are you doing all this?" Mm. So it's very daunting, but we're mm. never daunted. Mm. <laughs> so okay. I like that. Yeah. No, okay. But, but I like one of you were saying, you know, you work for the cause, not the applause. Mm -hmm. I think that is like a mm -hmm. very good. I, I like that. I already took a mental note of it. And then going back to the apprenticeship program, I know you guys every uh, Wednesday you have a show. Mm -hmm. yes. And unfortunately, by the time I listen to it, I'm mm -hmm. driving to Baba Bao. Right, right. So I cannot call in, but I do listen and mm -hmm. in case uh, if the doc is listening and all the, you know, you know I do listen to it. Mm -hmm. And then when I get home, I try, when they do the replay, I listen to it again. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So you have some listeners. It's just mm -hmm. that some listeners can't listen to can, it. Yeah. Or, can't call in while they're driving. Mm -hmm. But uh, going back to success programs, I do know that for me, personally, in, within my family, uh, this is like way back, almost 10, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, two of my cousins went and did the, the heavy equipment. Mm -hmm. They got certified. Mm -hmm. 
uh, they went to Guam. Mm-hmm. They were through those uh, certifications. They got hired right on the spot. That's great. And they were only contract for two years, and they were almost done. Their parents say, "Why don't you come back to play?" They go like, "No, mm-hmm. we're staying." This is, but success programs. Will you be able to like uh, your your crew, your team? I know Wednesday. Can we have like uh, one of the apprentices come here and just yeah. talk about the experience? Because since you are going to start interviewing February six, mm-hmm. yeah, it maybe it's another segue to move it. How would that? Uh, would that be okay? That'd be Which great. is this Wednesday. This if I'm Wednesday not at Cat Radio, we have uh, Cat Radio Doc Talk from eight to nine, and then nine to ten we have Cat Radio. So yeah, I'll be able to bring one of my apprentices so that we could plug our oncoming push for our next group of apprentices. So mm. I'm going to bring. I will bring another apprentice here. Is that going to be a mystery? So we have to tune in on yeah. Wednesday to find out who yeah, is yeah. the prince. I think I'm gonna keep it. I think I have an idea. If they're listening, they're probably uh, they're probably <laughs> like, man, who's gonna get? It? <laughs> you know, they're, they're probably in the shop. I think I have a good idea of who's gonna be. Um, but I'm gonna bring them on. Uh, one of the success stories. I mean, I've had uh, a couple of my apprentices on the radio throughout my time here. So mm. um, yeah, I'm gonna bring one of them on because they're about to graduate. Probably my se- one of my senior apprentices. And then uh, let him talk about what he what he took from the cat team, and mm-hmm. you know, maybe that because some people don't even really understand. Like the this, the apprentice program is good for your trade, but you gain so much um, knowledge from mm-hmm. the army that yeah. you know. The, the, my team has they don't just have their trade to offer. So a lot of people, you know, my last apprentice is last year, um, uh, Azalea. Um, she's in the Air Force right now. Iggy? Really? Iggy is a, yeah, Iggy. <laughs> Azalea, um, you know, I forgot her last name, <laughs> but Azalea, she, she's, she's in the Air Force right now. Oh, wow. Uh, through, through that and, you know, so yeah, I'm going to bring them on. That's really Talk good. Yeah. And then I think another thing when I, when I, I listened to you, when Rondi had a very good question, I mean, maybe this would be the last question was that, you know, so you guys talk about experience, but I guess also it's kind of a vice versa with your team coming the mm-hmm. first six months, it was also another way for, for them to actually kind of expose themselves and burn out, uh, learn and build their capacity in trying to deal with the communities mm-hmm. because, uh, you know, it's not easy talking with mm-hmm. kids. It's not easy, you know, trying to make new friends at a new place, mm-hmm. a new location. So it kind of, in a sense, it, it, these community activities also, I guess, mm-hmm. help build your growth within your team, yeah. you know? Out of the box, I mean. Yeah, no, it is. Um, throughout our train up, you know, my team, uh, we back in Hawaii, I made them plan each event. I made them plan an event back home. I wanted to see, like, mm. that was my, our way, me and the OSC's way of evaluating, like, who is, how they're going to be, you know? So, mm. like, even though I'm in Hawaii, I gave us, uh, Wiles, a book reading. I said, go, go, it was like a test, kind of, mm-hmm. go into the community. I want you to come up with a book reading event. I want you to come up with this event. I did that to kind of get out of the show. But one of the great success stories I could say for uh, my guys coming out is yeah. Sergeant Kieran Dungo. Like he is not, he is an introvert. Oh, okay. You know? He is an introvert, but man, if you see him at movie night and you see him now, he, he's grown so much. He's in the community. He's playing with the kids. Yeah, okay. So yeah, it is a good, it, it really teaches you to deal with people. Like I said, um, coming back, Last year, like I was not, I was, a, I've always been a, you know, a person that can speak, you know, yeah. social butterfly kind of, but yeah. um, he applies a place that, you know, the, the person on this team, you need to be able to get out and talk because yeah. you're not going to just do it by emails mm-hmm. and phone. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. right well, yeah, this... yeah I, I, uh, I, you guys made a huge impact definitely for the community. Mm-hmm. We've had, um, uh, especially on the kids. Well, see. So we have a, a shout out on our Facebook page from Esther Adelby. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a little girl and says, I will miss them because they gave us Christmas t-shirts oh, yeah. and we had a Christmas carnival. Oh, so, yeah, the Ira Elementary. Yeah, they're, yeah. Prob- they're, they're definitely going to miss you guys. So mm-hmm. uh, what's next? You know, if it's not Palau, then mm-hmm. what's next for uh, you? For me, uh, I don't know. Uh, I know I go back to Hawaii, probably possibly looking at... Uh, Hopefully. Packing up and coming back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, he doesn't need to unpack what he gets there. He just leaves it. They'll probably get his. I'm gonna go visit home for a little bit and then I'll just be back. No, yeah. um, yeah, we 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 don't know our our careers in the military. You you kind of go with the wind somehow. You ha- you try to plan. Uh, could I come back to Palau? Maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't don't know. Mm-hmm. Anything's possible. Possibly get promoted, move on to another position. And mm-hmm. uh, uh, our unit goes from. And our our unit doesn't just we go from Philippines. You know we have a lot of different initiatives coming mm-hmm. up. 
you know, like we talked about the different CAT teams coming up, mm -hmm. the different missions across the FSM, Papua mm -hmm. New Guinea. So my team, we all go back to our uh, station. and But I, I do know that there was talk, you know, when, when our higher-ups came, they were like, man, when you guys get back, you guys are going to be a uh, – a big aspect of our team because of your experience in Palau. So yeah. I, I I imagine a lot of my me and my team being in different places where we can impact another mission, mm. Mm -hmm. whether it's Palau, mm. Australia, FSM, Papua New Guinea, yeah. uh, Marshall Islands, mm. all these things. All right. <clears throat> all right, yeah. I'm well, gonna... um, yeah, definitely. Um, I, think what, I think right now is what would be your message and i know you have this chance to say this on mm -hmm. uh the, your show on wednesday but mm -hmm. um what would be uh your message to the palauans mm -hmm. uh, um, before you go before i leave palau i would just say uh the civic action team is here for you mm -hmm. um use us um whatever whatever you want like i said at the symposium we are. We have a lot of services from whatever, you, whatever events to construction, um, and, and as long as you come to, you know, you you come use us. Mm. We're here. We are here for Palau. The Civic Action Team is Civic Action Team Palau. Mm. We are here for Palau. That's that's our whole mission initiative, and um, whatever you want, don't hesitate. Come to the camp. Mm. Um, meet the faces of the Civic Action Team, whoever they are, mm. um, whether it's the Air Force, the Army, the Navy, and then. And use us because that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. All right, Joe, you got any last? Uh... No, uh, I'm just saying, you know, uh, first of all, thank you, thank you, you and your team. Uh, you know, I, I, it goes both ways. Uh, you, you, uh, your team was up for six months, and uh, I remember when I met you last weekend. I was like, Joe, yeah, I remember you. Mm -hmm. You were the one with uh, the archery. You were <laughs> the one that was yelling in the Belau games, uh, the Belau games, yeah. and so forth. And I was going like, yeah, okay. So even I get kind of, mm -hmm. but you know. Uh, thank you for the opportunities and your team too for being in Palau and and uh, and, and I guess the, the the gist of that we're trying to do this uh, show is number one to get your ideas and feedback, mm -hmm. but more importantly, how can we really get uh, uh, the next team really involved in the community? Because you've set the the standard, the mm -hmm. bar. Yeah. Now the next team coming <laughs> in has to be at that bar or one better. Yeah, yeah. I and, mean. Uh, like I said, through every organization, um, mm -hmm. they select their best. Mm -hmm. So I think if anybody's the best of their organization, whoever comes to replace me and my mm -hmm. OSC, they should be able to take what you, we have and mm -hmm. make it better. Yeah. Um, and then how we continue the continuity of it is mm -hmm. we we introduce our replacements with the community, yeah. um, get them out there. My goal is to mm -hmm. take my replacement and take them all the places I go. Mm -hmm meet all the places and, and pretty much do the things I do alongside mm -hmm. me for those mm -hmm. those pretty much three weeks of turnover. Mm -hmm. So he'll be at the track with me. He'll be at the House of Pain mm -hmm. with me. And all of our counterparts with their counterpart that they're turning over with will be mm -hmm. doing their initiatives. So mm -hmm. the people who do book reading will be at book reading with their, mm -hmm. their replacements. So hopefully it rolls over. And then mm -hmm. it's just once we leave, it just continues to roll. Yeah. It should be fluid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so just uh, thank mm -hmm. you. And then we look forward to... Uh, uh, the show uh, this Wednesday mm -hmm. and the surprise apprentice. Yeah, please listen. Yeah. I don't know. Are we able to do it Facebook Live? Mm -hmm. uh, this Wednesday? Mm -hmm. I probably have a question for after. It's <laughs> a good question for after. <laughs> um, but you know what? Um, I just got to say that uh, those are going to be really big shoes to fill mm -hmm. for the next team. And I really hope that they could mm -hmm. uh, do what you guys did. Mm -hmm. uh, but. Um, I don't know. I think you guys are the best uh, um, yeah, team no, that's I, been I, in Palau. I, would, I don't know where we're at on time, but I have the great team, and I want, you know, my OSC, Lauren Westman, um, my operations, Sergeant Sandoval, my construction uh, operations, Sergeant Bowman, mm. my welder, world-class welder, yeah. Sergeant Jones, my electrician, Wiles, my carpenter, Heiser, my plumber, um, Santiago, my heavy equipment operator, Sergeant Williams, my house paint assistant right there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know anybody. Missed. Oh, my mechanics, mm -hmm. um, Anabisa, and uh, Anabisa is well-known throughout the community. Mm -hmm. uh, Sergeant Q, uh, Doc Henderson, mm -hmm. um, uh, my supply who makes the whole thing, makes us work, uh, Specialist Ellington. Like, though, that's the team, mm -hmm. right? I'm the face, me and Lieutenant Westman, the OSC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do stuff in the community. We get a lot of balls rolling, but mm -hmm. they are the people that are working hard. They are out there 
And without them, you know, this civic to action team would not be as good as we are. We are pretty good. Yeah. Humble, humble brag. Yeah. I'm humble. I wish the best for the next team. Like I said, there will be many teams to do many different things. There will be great teams to leave an impact, but there will never be a civic action team 8408. Hey. There you go. There you go. There you go. All right. <laughs> well, we'll with that. Yep. thank you so thank you. much for uh, <laughs> that few uh, 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 minutes that we could interview you and get mm -hmm. to know more about mm -hmm. Civic Action Team, and as well as uh, uh, yourself, and getting to know you as mm -hmm. an individual. Mm -hmm. I appreciate. So, that. thank you so much for joining us. I think that was uh, the few the yeah. few minutes that we had enough mm -hmm. to cover all of those uh, mm -hmm. subjects, and we we hope you we hope the best for you. <laughs> and hope for his <laughs> third return. Wait, I almost couldn't speak. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or you should come back again. Yeah, I'll and then uh, people should be looking forward for your Wednesday show mm -hmm. uh, yeah. because this will be your, um, or these next few um, shows. Wednesday shows will be kind of your Our last, last shows. Yeah, so uh, people should really tune mm -hmm. in on the next uh, few Wednesdays that mm -hmm. we're going to be with this cat team, 8408. Yes. Yeah. So All right. Please listen. You know, the next couple after that, it'll be the Air Force on here. So. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's right. All right. Then we're going to get a close up of the show. We're going to be able to get a little bit of a show. We're going to get a little bit of a show. We're going to get a first sergeant marshal civic action team 8408. Yeah.